Uh-huh. Why is this private? Okay, anyway, let me start. I'm just trying to also connect from my phone to just uh... mm -hmm. Please let me know if you see the screen. Yes, Roger, we can see. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshara Militam Gena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Gena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Khatamahim Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakapalan Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajibam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parichana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Deva Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishaka Anvitamscha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Goravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sunyavadi Pasya Tyati Satarine Pancha Kalpatarabhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha E Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kancha Nagaurangi Radhe Vrindamane Shwari Vishabhan Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Pri Jaya Shari Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So, reading from Prabhupada Lila Amrit, Volume 2, Chapter 45 From this, I don't know if Father has probably joined already. Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, so is it from here? Yeah, what it was, yes. Okay. Tom uh, Baudry was living with his wife in Santa Cruz, California. After attending a festival in Barclay, celebrating Lord Chaitanya's appearance, where he chanted all day and after reading Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, he felt he should become Srila Prabhupada's disciple. He began chanting and trying to in interest his wife and friends in Krishna consciousness. When a traveling party of brahmacharis arrived to start a center in Santa Cruz, he told them he wanted to join, but they were skeptical. Then one day he showed up with a shaved head and dhoti. Tom Bautri Oh, dry. I began going out every day with the chanting party. They gradually, then gradually I began to break away from the Kirtan party to sell small books in shopping centers. One day I came back and one of the brahmacharis, Sarvabhauma, criticized me. He asked me how many big books I had sold. I said, I didn't sell any. He said, how many did you bring with you? I said, I didn't have any to bring with me. Then, you are in Maya, he said. You didn't bring any big books? How do you expect to sell them? Prabhupada wants these big, big books sold. So I thought to myself, Ghee, I must be in Maya. I said, how do, I, how do you sell these books? He said, you pray to Prabhupada. Prabhupada gives you the mercy. So I thought, well, that makes sense. That's how everything works in Krishna consciousness. I went to my house. I thought about it and prayed to Prabhupada that I could sell these big books. I prayed all evening and then took rest. 
in the morning i got up and it was on my mind so i put out one big book teachings of lord chaitanya in my bag of small books but in the course of selling the small books i forgot about the big book suddenly a lady came up to me and said what is that big book you have there then i remembered propat and my prayers and i said this is the teachings of lord chaitanya i gave her gave her the book and she gave me 3 dollars when i got back to the temple i told the devotees how propat had sold a book pragosha i was coming regularly to the detroit temple for classes in the evening and i was going uh, doing some odd uh, work to help the devotees prepare the temple every night i would be painting and i would watch the devotees coming back from sankirtan then uh, sorry they seemed very ecstatic and enlivened and i was always a little curious about what they did out there that made them come back like this i would be put on my ladder painting and listening uh, to them talk as they sat on the floor drinking hot milk they would talk about how they had knocked on one man's door and this had happened and that had happened and it was very attractive to me after i moved into the temple and had been a devotee about a week someone asked me if i would like to go out and try distributing books so i went out wearing a dhoti and tilak and going and using a straight forward pre- uh, presentation walking up to people giving them a card and a book telling them about the contents of the book showing them proper pictures and asking for a donation the exhilaration i got from that was just incredible it became extremely blissful blissful to go out and do this none of us could actually put a finger on why it was so ecstatic we used to lie awake at night all the brahmacharis stayed in one big room and we would lie there uh, on the floor in our sleeping bags whispering to each other what did you say to the people out there there would be all these different conversations going on in the room at night with the lights out and everyone talking trying to relate how we were presenting prabhupad's books jagadhatri devi dasi my first service was cleaning the temple i was cleaning the whole temple i would be looking out the window at the men piling into vans getting ready for sankirtan and i would always think that i would re- really like to do like to be doing that finally our temple formed two traveling parties one for men and one for women and we went for the summer to distribute books in the fairs of washington state the men and ladies used to have competition to see who could distribute the most sura i joined krishna consciousness in seattle in 1973 and they sent me out on book distribution my first day we would always hear from los angeles about the letters propad was sending everything we heard was centered on propad's desire for his books to be distributed it was by hearing this that newer devotees wanted to go out and be part of the sankirtan party we wanted to be soldiers for propad's book distribution army we went to the spoken spokane fair and the leader of the spokane temple wrote a letter to sri lopapa requesting him to come and telling uh, him the results of our book distribution then we received a reply from propa saying that he couldn't make it but that the devotee should go to the fair and preach on his behalf fulfill my mission propa said that every man and woman in the united states get a book that was just what we were waiting for to get an order directly from sri lopapa that this was what pleases him our book distribution kept increasing and we just thought we had never had so much fun before i wasn't like austerity it wasn't like austerity some of the devotees were thinking well it's really hard to go on sankirtan we were thinking you must be nuts it's the most fun thing you can do to go on sankirtan and well and then sell books it was fun not for sense gratification but for the soul because of our being linked in service to our spiritual master and krishna i appreciated it in that way and when i first met pragosh i could see he was really dedicated and a true lover of prabhupad because he was so dedicated to pleasing prabhupad by distributing books pragosh we were distributing in santa barbara california the area had been worked many times before and the people were really puffed up 
I went there with a couple of brahmacharis. One day, after trying to distribute for about seven hours, I had only sold one book. I had never before had anything like this happen to me in my whole time as a devotee. I was really working. I never stopped. Uh, at one particular point, I just couldn't take it anymore. I tried to give a book to someone and they just cracked off to me in a really obnoxious way. It had, uh, sorry, I had so much desire. I was trying so hard that when he did this, it just devastated me. I just wanted to punch the guy in the nose. My all my intensity came out and I erupted into tears. I just sat down on an old telephone pole that was lying at the street and started to cry. Then this devotee walked up and found me sitting there like I had just lost my best friend. He said, Prabhu, what's the matter? I said, I don't know what's the matter. I just can't distribute books. Not one person will take a book. I have been out here for seven hours. Do you know how many books I have distributed? One book. Then he sat down and preached to me and put me back together. The next day I was really trying to ha have a better day. And I took my book back and just ran from one person to another all morning. Then I was showing a, boy, sorry, a book to a girl and she said she couldn't pay me with money but that she would gladly pay me. Uh, I was young and naive, and I didn't know what exact. I didn't know exactly what she was talking about for a, a minute. Then finally, when I realized, I called Hare Krishna and took the book back from her, took off my wig, and uh, just bolted to another parking lot. Uh, I ran from person to person all day, praying really hard, real hard to Krishna. By the end of the day, I had distributed a large number of books. Lavanga Latika Devi Dasi. When I first came to Los Angeles, Srila Prabhupada uh, Srimati uh, told me that Srila Prabhupada had said that being in the temple all the time was Maya. Prabhupada wanted us to go out and distribute PTG, back to Godhead's door to door. I learned from the other devotees how to distribute books. There were so many experienced devotees who knew how, so I just followed in their footsteps. I would say what they have, they would say and do they would do. Then it became easy. When a person took a book and gave a donation, I could see it was Lord Chaitanya acting. I could see that everything was working under the direction of Krishna's internal en energy. Tom Baudry Baudry had moved from Santa Cruz to Los Angeles and by associating with devotees like Rameshwara and other book distributors, he soon became a leader. He was initiated in June 1972 and received the name uh, Tripurari Das. Every day he would go to a supermarket parking lot near the temple and sell a couple of hun couple hundred copies of Easy Journey to other planets. On one evening at the University of California at Long Beach, he and a few other books distributor dropped in on a lecture given by a popular yoga leader, Rameshwar. I remember when they came back. It was the middle of Bhagavad Gita class and I, I was giving the class in the temple room. All of a sudden, the door burst open and they were standing there. Tripurari was in his street clothes and the girls were in their saris. They just ran into the temple. You could see that something very special had taken place because their faces were glowing. They couldn't even speak. They were dazed, they were dazed or stunned. The whole temple was anxious to hear the news so I quickly finished the class. Then Tripurari told us that he had just distributed 17 Bhagavad Gitas, the full hard bound, unabridged Bhagavad Gitas in two hours. Leela Shakti had distributed 13, Vrindavan had distributed 11, Tilak had distributed 11, and Makan Lal had distributed 9. Nothing like this had ever been done before. We were all completely astonished that anyone could sell so many big books like that. One morning, a few days later, Tripurari was driving down the San Diego uh, freeway to go on traveling Sankirtan when he saw the sign for the Los Angeles airport and spontaneously decided to try it. After selling a dozen uh, big books that day, he realized the airport was wonderful for book distribution. He started going out regularly to the airport and was soon distributing 13 to 40 
sorry, 30 to 40 books a day, sometimes giving individuals as many as six volumes of Srimad Bhagavatam at once. April, 9, April 11, 1973. Srila Prabhupada flew from New York to Los Angeles and a crowd of loving devotees greeted him. Tripurari. Prabhupada was arriving at 2 in the afternoon and all the devotees were going to meet him. But it was also Easter weekend and a big day for book distribution at airport. At the time, I was the only one working in the airport. I was doing rather well and had sold about 30 big, uh, thirty books by 1.30. Then I changed into my dhoti and walked over to a rival's area to meet his divine grace. When he entered the terminal building, he looked at me and smiled and I melted in ecstasy. We had Sankirtan all the way down the streets, uh, stairs and when we got outside, all the devotees were going back to the temple. Then I thought, what business do I have going back to the temple and chanting with all the devotees? My business is to stay out and distribute the books. That is my service to Prabhupada. So I was the only one who didn't return to the temple. I stayed and distributed 67 books. When I got back, I found that Karandara had told Prabhupada about me and how I had been distributing books. When I heard that, I became very enthusiastic and continued to distribute books every day that week. In Los Angeles, Srila Prabhupada took his morning walks either at the shore of Pacific Ocean or in Cheviot Hills Park. Every morning, a few de disciples would join him as well as Thao Dam Singh, a PhD candidate in organic chemistry at University of California. Srila Prabhupada would regularly discuss with Dr. Singh the scientific theory of life or originating from matter. Day after day, Prabhupada would expose Darwin's theory as foolish and unscientific. The sun would just be appearing on the horizon as Prabhupada and a small group of disciples walked. The air would be chilly and Srila Prabhupada would wear his hooded saffron overcoat while his disciples wearing sweaters or wool chadars followed him listening and asking questions. Most of the conversation, however, would be between Prabhupada and Dr. Singh who played the a role of a materialistic scientist. Dr. Singh would present atheistic arguments and Srila Prabhupada would defeat them with scriptures and logic. I say to the scientist, Prabhupada said, if life originated from chemicals and if your science is so advanced, then why can't you create bio biochemically in your laboratories? One On one of these mornings, the older devotees, including Rameshwar to Prabhupada and the devotees request, Prabhupada, uh, Rameshwar began telling Srila Prabhupada about book distribution. He mentioned that sometimes the distributors would meet in person list and convince, convince them to buy a copy of Bhagavad Gita as it is. Srila Prabhupada stopped and turned gravely to Rameshwar. What do you say to them? He asked. Rameshwar told Prabhupada some of his techniques for selling a book. After a few moments, Prabhupada said, our men need to study our books also. On the morning, Tripurari accompanied Prabhupada on his walk. Prabhupada said little as they walked up and down the beach. Only when they were walking back toward the car did one of the devotees mention, Prabhupada, Tripurari is here. Prabhupada turned and smiled. Ah, how is the book distribution going? He asked. This was Tripurari's first time to speak directly with his spiritual master and he wanted to say many things at once. His in nervous enthusiasm, he began blurting, blurting out his realization. Prabhupada interrupted, This is the best service for humanity. And he quoted from the Bhagavad Gita, There will never be a devotee more dear to me than he who preaches his, this message. With the exception of Rameshwar and Tripurari's brief encounters with Prabhupada, none of the book distributors in Los Angeles had any personal exchanges or meetings with the spiritual master. But the closeness of their relationship with him was not dependent on physical proximity. Tripurari, my association with Srila Prabhupada was always more or less in separation and in the field. While many of the older devotees were trained personally by Prabhupada, I never got that training. I was trained by Srila Prabhupada more from within my own heart. I think that's the case with all of our book distributors. They have a very intimate sense of feeling for Prabhupada, but they never had much personal contact. Their intimacy and real sense of knowledge, knowing Prabhupada very closely was because of their service, which Prabhupada said was his life and soul, seeing that the books went out. Srila Prabhupada liked to sit in his garden with its roses, jasmines, azaleas, honey, suckle, mint, silver, lace, wine, marigolds, and banana trees, and he liked the sound of the fountain. The small compound with its lawn, flowers, bushes, and seat for Srila Prabhupada was surrounded by a high cinder 
block walls when propat re uh, received special guests the devotees would bring chai chairs for them but propat disciples would always sit on thin mats on the lawn and look out uh, sorry look up at shila propat on his elevated seat the neighborhood was quieter and more peaceful in the evening and propat could hear the kirtan in the temple and the cars passing along venice Bo boulevard boulevard men's shouts from the nearby karate school where a disturbance propad had come to tolerate for an hour or more propad would sit listening to a reading from krishna the supreme personality of god had while around him on the grass sharing the transcendental moments at his disciples propad was very satisfied to hear krishna leela and he would sit erect and uh, head held high in a meditative mood <laughs> it was only an informal group but his presence made the occasion very special momentous from time to time he would interrupt the reader to commit to comment night would fall and he would end the reading and leave the garden walking on gravel path past the uh, main temple building up to his second floor suit Srila Prabhupada so much liked his Los Angeles garden that he decided he wanted one like it at his Mayapur headquarters. With regard to Mayapur house, I may suggest you make one roof garden. On the top of the house, you can put soil of six inches and then plant so many tulsi plants and nice bushes. I like the garden very much. Just like here in Los Angeles temple, they have made one very nice garden for me and I sit there every evening. So, you please also make a first-class Mayapur garden. At about 20, 10 in the evening, Srila Prabhupada would usually go into his bedroom and lie down. His servant Shrutikirti would massage his legs and Prabhupada would then close his eyes. Meanwhile, Rameshwar would be waiting at the bottom of the stairs, hoping that the secretary or ser servant would come down with a message from Prabhupada. Rameshwar, I was too afraid to go into this Srila Prabhupada's room, so I would be waiting at the bottom of the stairs, just hanging there, just waiting for one word. Srila Prabhupada would often say something, and it would be passed to me. Then every morning, the Sankirtan devotees would just surround me and ask, what did he say? Then uh, they would be begging for some nectar. It was an intense experience. We felt that we were all having a special direct connection with Prabhupada. While waiting outside Prabhupada's door, I would be in transcendental bliss, just thinking how we were distributing books as an offering of pure love for our spiritual master. This was the first time that devotees were going to the airports. No one else in the moment was going to an airport except the devotees in Los Angeles. So it was something very special. No one was doing book, big book distributions in the quantity that we were. At one point, when Srila Prabhupada saw one of my daily Sankirtan reports, he commented, Who is Rameshwar? Day after day, Srila Prabhupada was seeing these ecstatic reports uh, sprinkled with nectarian quotes from his Chaitanya Charitamrita Adilila that had just been published. He realized that these disciples were in ecstasy and so he asked, Who are they? He could see we loved Sankirtan. It was not an artificial burden or that we were struggling. He could see that there didn't, there didn't seem to be any struggle. It was like fun, bliss, ecstasy, and the whole philosophy was there. We were completely tuning into the Chaitanya Charitamrita philosophy that Lord Chaitanya descends with his confidential associates to spread love of God, but doesn't distribute, uh, sorry, doesn't discriminate who is a fit candidate and who is not. These were the verses we were putting into the daily letter. This was our mood, and Prabhupada loved it. From Shritikirti's point of view, the evening massage was a very special time when, because Srila Prabhupada seemed free of the pressure of the day's management. Shritikirti would bring several night-blooming jasmine flowers from the garden and Prabhupada would place the fragrant blossoms near his nose during the massage. He would be even quieter and more relaxed than during the Krishna book reading. There was, there was no business to attend to. He had done a hard day's work. Although he would be rising after only three hours rest, he now lay back and wrapped into in thought or chanting softly. 
some evening shila propath would delay the massage and slowly walk back and forth in his bedroom chanting on his beads or he would sit on his bed and chant but on most nights he would lay lie on his back while shrutakirti massaged his legs if he conversed with his servant at all it wouldn't be about iskon management he might look at a picture on the wall and say how beautiful krishna is how could they not be attracted to krishna or sometimes he would talk about his childhood and other informal topics but even at this relaxed time he relished hearing the sankirtan results and so he would sometimes read rameshwar's daily report or sometimes say something about the preaching krishna consciousness one night after reading one night after reading rameshwar's ecstatic daily sankirtan propas felt moved in moved to write a message on the back of the report dating the paper april 20 1973 he wrote my dear boys and girls you are working so hard for broadcasting the glories of lord krishna's lotus feet and thus my guru maharaj will be so pleased upon you certainly my guru maharaj will bestow his blessings thousand times more than me and that is my satisfaction all glories to the assembled devotees ac bhaktivedanta swami shila swami uh nb yeah note everyone should go with the sankirtan party as soon as possible rameshwar may have been shy like uh, while quietly waiting at the bottom of the stairs for the slightest recognition from shila propad but when he received the prize jewel of this hand written note he ran off shouting to share the good fortune with any devotee who was still awake tripurari every morning after mangalarti there was always a little group cluster around the door of the temple because you weren't supposed to talk in the temple while chanting japa early in the morning so rameshwar was standing at the door doorway chanting and he called us over until a little cluster of devotees were there at the doorway he showed us propas note some of the de- other devotees got frustrated seeing that we were talking during the japa period they felt we were distraction or that we weren't absorbed in our service or in japa but actually we were really intensely absorbed in thinking of sankirtan and when we returned to our japa we began chanting with the desire to be able to go out and please propad in a few days propad's words everyone should go with the sankirtan party as soon as possible reached other temples and although shila propad soon left los angeles returning to india his message stayed and depend depend the devotees convictions in the summer of 1973 the devotees found that at the concerts they could distribute hundreds of uh, krishna books in a few hours the krishna book available now as a paper book trio trilogy 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 uh, with a foreword by george harrison was especially attractive to young people in july rameshwara wrote to Prabhupada in London telling him that the Los Angeles temple was distributing 2,000 Krishna books a week and that at one concert devotees had distributed 600 books in two hours. The devotees in Los Angeles distribute, decided that Sri Prari and a few other, de- other leading Sankirtan men should travel from temple to temple and share their experience. Rameshwar wrote to Prabhupada, This is the mercy of Shri Shri Rukmini Dwarakadish, the deity of Los Angeles Temple, that we can send out so many devotees to other centers. It is a real op- opulence of lo- uh, new Dwaraka. Shila Prabhupada replied on uh, August 3rd. There is no doubt about it to distribute book, books in our most important activity. is our most important activity the temple is a place not for eating and sleeping but as a base from which we send out our soldiers to fight with maya fight with maya means to drop thousands and millions of books into the laps of the conditioned souls just like during the war time the bombs are raining from the sky like anything i like also your program of sending out your best men to teach the others that is that actual progress of krishna consciousness to train others continue this program so that in the future every devotee in our movement will know the art of distributing books this is approved by me a letter from a woman who had recently received some of propas books appeared in the july bbt newsletter the letter had been written on twa in flight stationery in the san francisco airport 
before i departed for london the krishna book was given to me by one of your followers i never felt so happy and privileged or honored would be a better phrase i am sick of this material rat race yes <laughs> i want a higher life without material riches and games on her way back from london she had purchased another book raja vidya in the chicago airport and now asked for more help it is beautiful so con- she concluded as the priori traveled and taught his method of sankirtan more devotees followed his example and began wearing a wig and conventional dress while selling books this way of dressing made approaching people much easier and increased the potential for distributing books some devotees however disapproved on one day in september 1973 during shila prabhupada's morning walk on juhu beach in bombay a few of his sanyasi disciples brought the matter before him prabhupada referred to the main many gentlemen strolling uh, along juhu beach who would always offer respects to the devotees by folding their hands and saying hare krishna this was a sign of a real vaishnava shila prabhupada said anyone who sees him immediately thinks of krishna the devotees therefore should pro- prominently display some vaishnava markings as tilak shikha and neck beads so that people could know here are hare krishna people one sanyasi remarked that in america devotees were now wearing wigs and dressing like hippies to distribute books he did not let his own men do this because he felt it self defeating if people didn't even know they were speaking to a devotee if someone wanted to distribute books he concluded krishna would help that devotee find a place where he could do so without having to disguise himself shila prabhupada turned to the others asking their opinions one devotee suggested that the reason the devotees in america wore disguises was because otherwise they would not be permitted to distribute books in certain places prabhupada heard the opinion and then gave his decision these disguises should be stopped immediately we shall not in any way sacrifice our standards he said we must maintain our principles strictly this dressing with long hairs and karmic clothes is the tendency to once again become hippies because you were hippies that tendency is still there so this should be stopped walking back toward the temple proper saw a poor man evacuating by the road side in public view he is not changing his standard despite public opinion Prabhupada said, can we not maintain our standards as strictly as uh, they are maintaining theirs? A little uh, letter was drafted and signed by Tamal Krishna Goswami, Prabhupada's secretary and Prabhupada signed also on a line marked approved. The letter stated that all Sankirtan devotees should always wear tilak, dhoti, neck beads and shika and should depend on Krishna rather than disguises to help distribute books at the bottom of the letter however was a uh, ps shila prabhupad upon checking the above added if they like they may wear coat and pants but tilak shikha beads these things should be there previously shila prabhupad had addressed the subject in various letters to jagadisha in canada prabhupad had replied that there was no objection to wearing western clothes including a wig or hat we have to take whatever is favorable position for executing krishna consciousness propad had written sometimes we may adopt some means in order to help distribute books but in february 1973 he had written to rupanuga that he did not want devotees dressing as he please this should be stopped we should not give any one uh, we should not give any one cause to call us hippies but the devotees may dress up in respectable clothes like ladies and gentlemen in order to distribute many literatures under fresh special circumstances wherever there are indi- individuals there are bound to be differences of opinion still prophet preferred to be spared such detailed management his gbc men should consult among themselves and then present their conclusions to him for a final decision in this way prophet had written i will be free to con- concentrate on my translation of shrimad bhagavatam The letter from India reached Karandar in Los Angeles, but before announcing that all the Sankirtan in Western clothes must be stopped, he wanted Prabhupada to hear his side of the story. He gave an elaborate report on the benefits of devotees wearing ordinary Western dress while selling books. The main thing Prabhupada seemed to be objecting to, he concluded, was a disreputable appearance, devotees looking like hippies. 
He now informed Rafa that the distributors were actually clean, well groomed, and presentable. If the book distributors were uh, restricted to appearing in public with shaved heads and dhotis, he said, then the distribution would decline by uh, about two thirds. If extremes and misapplications have occurred, he wrote, they should be uh, worked out rather than giving up the whole program. This time, Shri Prabhupada replied in favor of the Western dress. Yes, you can go on with your book distribution as you were doing before. There is not any harm. I thought that our men were becoming like hippies. But now I understand from you that this is not the case. So I have no objection. Our main business is to distribute books. And from the reports I am receiving from all over the world, the progress is very encouraging. A disagreement arose about the distributor's technique. A few people had written the ISKCON secretary complaining that they had been misled or pressured into buying a book and a complaint to which devotees responded variously. The book distributors were protective of Prabhupada's order that as many books as possible be distributed. Just because a few people have complained, they argued, was no reason to cool down book distribution. They quoted Srila Prabhupada's statements that opposition to Sankirtan indicates its pure, its purity and genuineness. Srila Prabhupada had explained this uh, point in his books in uh, discussing the historical incident of Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan party being stopped by, by the Muslim government. Prabhupada had written, We must remember that such in incidents took place in the past 500 years back and... Uh, years ago and the fact that they are still going on indicates that our Sankirtan movement is really authorized. For if Sankirtan were, were an insignificant material affair, demons would not object to it. People in America have also objected to public chanting, to the devotees' dress, to Krishna conscious philosophy, to food. Someone would always oppose. The main thing the book distributors said was to save the conditioned souls who were heading for a hellish next life. If a person got a book and read just one page, his life could be changed. Other devotees, however, including temple presidents, were disturbed by the complaints. Someone recalled that Prabhupada had already addressed this point in 1970. Do all activities with great enthusiasm. All our activities must be open so that no one may criticize our mission. So all dealing uh, must be to the standard of Vaishnavism as everyone is under as everything is undertaken uh, for rightly in Krishna consciousness in a Krishna conscious way then Lord Krishna will be pleased to provide all facilities for aiding such sinful sorry such sincere service Srila Prabhupada wanted the book distributors to execute his order but he was not giving them a license to do anything and everything and claim it for uh, it was for krishna preaching required expertise not only in getting people to take a book but in giving them the right impression the book distributors maintained that they that they were doing the best they could but that they would try to improve if other devotees thought they could do better then they should demonstrate how to distribute books without disturbing anyone. Disturbing books all, sorry, distributing books all day, day after day was hard. Prabhupada, sorry, people, people were already agitated by their minds and senses and harassed by their occupations, governments and personal relationships. No wonder even an innocent devotee sometimes disturbed them. The tactics in question were mostly the book distributors' lines. The distributors would say that they were students, that they were helping get young people off drugs, or that the books were about how to solve modern day crisis. None of these things were untrue, but the emphasis was sometimes excessive. Um, okay, I'll stop there then. I think we can't finish this chapter now. And yeah, we could cover this in next session. Thank you very much. I'll stop here.
anyone want to share ki yeah, prabhuji yeah i think uh, the power of uh, importance of book distribution is really evident uh, and uh, one question to be like uh, does iskon give some trainings to people for book distribution or how do they generally yeah uh, yeah if you want there is a there is always a way so yeah. especially i think book marathon is starting december every month every year in the month of december there is a book distribution called book marathon huh? and um, during this the plan is to reach out to as many people as possible to distribute books and usually this is the time where christmas holidays are there and people want to give gifts so in that way there is a whole uh, uh, books that come out all over the world it's not just in only us or in india it's all over the world and to make it very successful these experienced uh, uh, book distributors they usually conduct seminars and last month or last before month there was a seminar conducted also in gauradesh and i think there is also one more if i let's see there is also some seminars are coming up yeah. okay okay otherwise also we can also get in touch with uh, our temple yeah neel madhav prabhu is very active book distributor he can he can tell how to distribute books uh, rupa vilas prabhu is also uh you know lila amrit mata ji uh, sorry prabhu ji lila amrit lila amrit mata ji no no prabhu uh, a devotee very old aged yes my one mata with full white hairs no no not white hairs okay uh, she is from south america i think so she she stood as i think third uh, leading book distributors in germany oh. last year Yeah, so you can talk to them they can inspire they can guide i think i don't know adiras prabhu have you also attended such seminar before yeah you're on mute no prabhu sorry no no prabhu i did not attend any seminar for book distribution fine fine yeah i think something is coming up if anyone is interested can share they can they can immune you to the um, public uh, devastations happening as is thank you roji because yesterday uh, you know kesho maharaj was uh, uh, introducing a book he uh, you know he kind of you know uh, recently published prabhu ji so that time he was uh, telling that he will be in book distribution through this month uh, yeah correct right he is uh, he is also a role model he he distributes books like and he is one of the leading book distributions in in the uk oh, yes bro he travels yeah especially he comes with a sankirtan van travels all over from country to country and distribute books yeah he, i i remember also last time when our guru maharaj was yeah not not so well and especially in kartik month yeah uh, from rindavan kesha maharaj he left ex- exclusively to yeah he took sanyas right yes so sir. after sanyas that was his first year first year book marathon so yeah so much so, so much depended on him okay okay prachi thank you very much yeah thank you um i'm seeing first time uh, someone with madhuri patil i'm sorry if do i know you already or uh namaste prabhu prabhu ji and everybody listening namaste. um yeah. i actually attended uh, in the kolan the one of the yeah. program uh about prabhupada that was my first ta- first time in germany iskon visit i came mm-hmm. with my 3 month old baby so from okay. that day i'm trying to struggle like struggling to hear these programs but my little mm-hmm. one throws tantrums and all in this but today mm-hmm. i could uh, uh, you know listen quite a bit it was very interesting mm-hmm. but yes i have been uh, trying to connecting and also i also try to uh, connect the other group the yadurani's group for the kids specially very informative one mm-hmm. yes and i also 
I just try for now because um, as my baby is also too small uh, right now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. These programs uh, are very soothing for me and uh, very informative. I like to hear this more and I want to like uh, right now, as I told you, I'm struggling, but I want, I want to always keep trying. I think yeah. my baby is too small. That is the only one reason right now, not able to attend each and every program of yours. Yeah. yeah. No worries. Uh, by the way, I'm, I mean, first of all, very happy to come, come across you and uh, nice to meet you. And we have, uh, yeah, quite quite few uh, families who are having babies, and I'm very sure that you will also spend nice time with uh, when we come together. Yeah, maybe in coming coming in December there will be very nice occasions where we all meet. Yeah, yes. And the kids also can come; they can spend time, and this is all. Uh, this is a, one of the agenda of why we are having such kind of satsang. Yes. So that we can we can yeah. Mm. We always try to awesome. come, you know, because uh, we get posted yeah. by this group about the events and all. We always mm. try a lot, like, you know, yeah, yeah, these fine. have been. But my husband yeah. also tries, but he's also stuck with his job and school. Yeah. But you, uh, whatever I could uh, get the information is, I feel very good. Like, I feel soothing and I'm yeah. very blessed to be a part of this group. Yeah. Where do you live, by the way? Uh, I live in Munshan Gladbach. Oh, you come from Munshan Gladbach. Yes. Oh. yes. We live in Duisburg. Yeah, me, Adirasa Prabhu, we live in Duisburg. Okay. And Satish Prabhu, he lives in Essen. And Dwaraka Vasini Mataji, she lives in Hamburg. Yeah. Yes. So this is one way through which I can stay in touch with all of you from different places. Yes. And uh, be able to, yeah. And I, I, as you said, yeah, you, you right now are attending to your little one. So yeah. there is also what... What I heard people telling is because we have a lot of recordings that are available on our YouTube. I don't know if you have visited. You can also yes. hear at your own pace whatever yes. is interesting. You can just listen for a few minutes yes. and revisit. Yes, and I do. In that way, you can also yeah. And yes. but we are more more interested. Yeah, will be very nice if we can see you soon. Yeah, I'm right now okay. in India. Sure. But yes. uh, once I come back, then we all can once have a uh, meet meet up. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Okay. Mm. Then have a nice evening and nice weekend. And Adhirasa, Prabhu, I don't know. Yeah, your question tomorrow, is about Prabhuji. tomorrow, right? Yeah. Tomorrow, um, how is it if it if you plan something like this? Is it six o'clock too late? Or okay? You mean uh, tomorrow six o'clock? Tomorrow evening six. I think tomorrow, um, practically, Mathis family they're visiting. Achha. Mm -hmm. I just hope also come here. <clears throat> I don't know how will we join. Yeah. Fine. Let's see. Because in the morning, I will be taking my father to hospital. So I don't know what time I'll be free back. So let's discuss. But uh, mostly Sunday, I can't do it because. Unless Sunday early morning, six o'clock, if you guys are ready, <laughs> but it's too much. So. Sunday, there won't be a class, but tomorrow, let's see, so that we can finish off with this Govardhan Leela part three, if it's possible. Yeah. Okay, Parabhuja, please let me know. So for tomorrow, should, what should I post? Uh... For tomorrow, uh, yeah, let's first finalize the time, then we can post. Hmm? Okay, Parabhuja, please let me know then okay. what time then post. Oh, okay, then. Thank you so much. Manchakal Padrabhyasya, Kripa, Sindhubya, Evacha, Patitanam, Pavan, Ebhyo, Vaishnav, Ebhyo, Namo, Namaha. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, His Holiness Satsvaru Bhagoswami Maharaj ki jai, Ananda Koti Vaishnavan ki jai. Hare Krishna. Krishna Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.